everybody, and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft Feed the Beast server. Yeah, guys, playing a little Feed the Beast monster today. Whoop, and we're going down the elevator. Oh, yeah, guys, welcome back. So last episode, we were doing some stuff. Uh, we set up a quarry and an AE system, and we were quarrying out in our quarry age, which is great. Since then, the it has finished. I've collected a lot of resources. <laughs> I've collected a lot of resources and I've taken all of our ores and I have put them through a pulverizer and then I put them through our powered furnace. So yeah, we have all the items that we can smelt and pulverize, <laughs> pulverize and smelt it. And yeah, we got a lot of resources now. Uh, I ended up putting a chest above our pulverizer here, just a golden chest. So I was throwing, oh, whoops, all of my, uh, we just updated to a newer version of Feed the Beast Monster. We're running 1.1.0 now. Let's see, where's the inventory? Recipe mode, back, back, there we go, okay. Yeah, we just updated to a the newest version of Feed the Beast Monster 1.1.0, and that resets my NEI settings every time we do that. Okay, so yeah, I put a golden chest up here and I stuck in all of our ores that needed to be pulverized and smelted. Uh, they went to the pulverizer, pulverizer put them into the furnace, and then the furnace ejected them over here. So yeah, that was pretty much automatic. I just set that up to do it like overnight or whatever so I didn't have to sit around and watch it. Uh, so all of our ores are smelted and ready to go. Uh, I've also upgraded our redstone energy cells to resonant energy cells. Somebody left a comment, I think last episode, asking me why I didn't upgrade to these. And to be honest, I don't know why I didn't. I thought that the redstone were the highest tier. Apparently, resonant are the highest tier now. So there we go. Each of these hold 50 million RF. So we have quite a lot of RF here. Same power setup, just I've upgraded the power cells. Uh, I have an energetic infuser here. This is something that I made and I haven't really talked about. This is basically how you initially power your weapons and things. Like, for instance, this fortune pick. If it was down on power, I'd stick it there. It slowly charges and then it'll spit it out over here. And it looks like we have the blue and the orange. So I assume we could probably automatically pipe in and pipe out somehow. But I don't think we really need to do that. You can also make those flux capacitor things, and I think you could charge them in there that way too. But one thing that's cool about this power armor, anything you have on your hotbar, if you run around with it, the suit will charge it. And is this thing full? Yeah, that's full. I was going to show you real quick, but I can't. But basically, yeah, anything that's on your hotbar, or maybe just in your inventory, I can't remember what it is, will just charge if you have that kinetic thing from the power suits. <laughs> anyway... Uh, another thing that I wanted to bring up, I never really talked about this before. On my helmet, uh, let's take a look at this real quick on the power armor. I put this high efficiency solar generator on here. Now, the only reason why I wanted to bring this up is because it uses this item called a computer chip. And let's take a look at that. Computer chip. This guy. So this uses... Three gold wires, two advanced circuits, and an OV scanner. Nothing too difficult, right? Well, the problem is this item, this 2x gold insulated gold cable, doesn't exist. And I think this is probably just an artifact from industrial craft upgrading. But if we look for gold cable, we have this insulated gold cable, which is not the same as this. This item just doesn't exist. So I went to go make one of those a while ago when I was setting up all my power armor and I made the parts for it, but I couldn't craft it just because this was the wrong item. So I went ahead and I put the parts for that here. I cheated one in. I'm going to destroy these parts, but I just wanted to bring that up in case people are wondering how I got that. Yeah, uh, you can't actually craft it legitly just because there's like that ID problem. That gold cable doesn't exist anymore, and I think that recipe just needs to be updated. But yeah, uh, these items I'm just going to go ahead and destroy in the future at some point, but I'm just leaving them there for now. Um, let's see, what else? What else? So, power. I wanted to get our applied energistic systems going over here. And I have made some of these solar generators. You guys told me about 
these new generators that were added. I think it's, yeah, extra utilities it says on the screen there. So there's a few of these generators. Let's take a look at this real quick. Generator. Yeah, these guys right here, there's quite a few of them. So we got a survivalist generator. If you click on these, you can go through any eye and I'll show you more information. Um, so I think this is just basically like a generator, like the IC2 kind of generator. Uh, there's a furnace generator. I'm actually not sure using regular furnace fuel. So what does this one use? Using regular furnace fuel, very low energy output, but efficient and fuel lasts 20 times. Oh, okay, okay. So this is a little bit better, I guess, but it'll just make the, the output slower. Uh, lava generator, ender generator, you can put ender pearls in there or such things. Heated redstone generator. Uh, lava and redstone can go in there. We have a culinary generator, which is kind of cool. You can power things using food. Uh, potions generator, solar generator. These guys in front of me, I've made a few of those thinking those are going to be good. Uh, TNT generator. Uh, you can put gunpowder TNT. Pink generator. I I don't understand the point of this, but anything with that's pink or pink dye can go in there. This guy, uh, high temperature furnace generator, it says it's very inefficient, but it can like put out a whole lot of power. So that's kind of interesting. And then there's this nether star generator, which I've heard is very cheaty. And I'm pretty sure I heard they're going to be nerfing this or probably changing a lot of these generators in the future. But all that aside... These solar generators work just like you'd think they would. In the sunlight, they charge up, and then they can output power. But there is one problem with them. So if we look at the information on here, uh, let's see. However, there is a problem. The generator cannot generate power and transmit it at the same time. So in order to switch between power generation and power output mode, you have to apply a redstone signal, which kind of limits their usability. Um, I'm sure I could hook up some kind of a computer craft thing. So when it's full, it'll put on a redstone signal and drain it and then turn it off when it's empty to let it recharge. Something like that. We could do that. But that's just a whole lot of work for like hardly any power that these things put out. Sure, they hold 500,000, but it's not like they can produce a lot of power really quickly. So I don't know so much about these. I spent some resources on these guys. I think each one takes a, is it a block of diamond? What is this solar generator? Yeah, it's a block of diamonds, some blue dye, nether quartz, redstone, and a furnace. So I've spent 27 diamonds on these three right here. And it turns out there's a problem with them, like I said. Uh, I guess I just didn't read that text and I was just going a little overboard. It's like, yeah, let's power everything with solar. Well, hmm. They do work, but yeah, I don't think we're going to use them. So I'm going to figure out another way to power my applied energistics so I can get access to my items. And somebody on the last episode named uh, Flying Butter Horse left a comment talking about a new block in MFR that I wasn't even aware of called the Steam Turbine. Let's take a look at Mine Factory Reloaded. Mine Factory Reloaded. Okay, so these are all the newest items in here. And the Steam Turbine, I've not seen this before. So this uses a steam dynamo, some plastic sheets, uh, pistons, machine frame, redstone transmission coil, silver and redstone, and some silver. So it's pretty easy to make. Yeah, not too much goes into this. Okay. So what's interesting about the steam turbine, from what I've been told, is that it only needs water to work. You do not have to provide a fuel. It does need sunlight. All it needs is water to make power. So to me, that sounds pretty cheaty, and I love it. So tell you guys what, let me go ahead and craft one of those things real quick. I need to get access to my items and do all that stuff. Um, actually, I could probably just pick one of these guys up and stick it right here, but we need the redstone signal, which I don't have. All right, well, I'll tell you guys what, let me craft one of those solar generators, or not solar generators, I'm sorry, steam turbines. We'll check it out and see how it works. See you in a bit, guys. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I crafted up one of those steam turbines. Here we go. Let's take a look at this guy real quick. So let's put it on the ground and we right click on it. So steam turbine, we got a water tank or some kind of fluid tank and our energy store. So it looks like it can actually store energy, which is good. So it runs off water. Let's put some water in there. 
all that water went away. We got 40 millibuckets left. I think it needs more than that to run. Uh, so that made 1,920 RFs, or I guess 192 MJ. So that's pretty powerful. One bucket of water, 192 MJ. Huh. Okay, so it uses the water really, really quickly. So we're going to need to get ourselves an infinite spring. So let's go ahead and take care of that real fast. And... Uh, <laughs> it's hard to get down to my water down there now. So I'm probably going to have to find another way to do that. I think i got another bucket of water here. We're going to need two of those, though, in order to make our spring. Oop. Ah! Silly server lag. So, yeah, that sounds like that's going to be a really cool way to make power. And it's not expensive at all, which is something that I really like. Did I break that? There we go. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Okay, so we got two buckets of water. Uh, we are probably going to need the aqueous accumulator. And actually, I think I might have one on me from the quarry stuff. Let's take a look. And yes. Okay, so I have that. So maybe we can just pipe water into it directly to make some power. Let's check that out. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the solar generator. Doesn't produce power that quickly. I'm not too too happy with them. Maybe they'll change them in a future update, though. I don't know. Uh, they're kind of expensive for what they do, unfortunately, though. Uh, so let's see. We want to power our ME controller. This system's probably going to be losing power. Yeah, the power's going down. So let's see here. If we... Hmm. We're going to want... Oh, where did my... Oh, it's right here. We're going to want this guy probably right here to power the system. So below here, let's start digging out. Oop, <laughs> going a little too crazy with that shovel. Yeah, something like that. We can put a bucket of water there. We'll put a bucket here. And let's fill the rest of this in. Uh-huh, and then we'll put the aqueous accumulator directly below, piping water into it. Hopefully that works. Uh, it is pumping water in. Is that powering? We right click in here, what's going on? Oh yeah, it is powering. Okay, so we're storing energy, it is powering up. Aha! So we are powering our ME system off water. <laughs> that is so cheaty. I like it. Okay, so let's see, what else can we do here? Uh, it does not look like this is filling up, so maybe we need to pipe more water into it uh, to get the maximum amount of energy it produces. I'm not too sure. Let's go ahead and reconfigure this thing. We'll do just to do the top. I don't know if that changes anything. It doesn't really look like it. Uh-huh. So this is full. Oh, it's still gaining power. So is that stop at 10,000? Nope. Maybe a little bit higher. What are we doing here? Are we oh, okay. So now we're producing a little bit of extra power. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty good. Pretty good. So I'm curious. If we pipe more power into this thing, I'm sorry, more water, does it make power faster? It probably would, wouldn't it? So that should be the next step. Let's get another aqueous accumulator, aqueous accumulator around here and see if we can pipe more water into the steam turbine and see how fast we can make power. All right, guys, so I let the AE system drain of power and I removed the aqueous accumulator from below the steam turbine. I wanna try something different this time. Uh, I've taken my transfer nodes that we had before and I've upgraded them to liquid nodes. You can do this. Let's check out the recipe real quick. So it's your transfer nodes, some iron, some lapis, or blue dye, and buckets. So it's not too terribly difficult. So these liquid nodes can actually, if you set them above source blocks of water, uh, they will take water and put them into a place where it can go. So for instance, I could set them on these dirt blocks right here, remove the dirt, and they will suck water into this thing. So let's go ahead and try that real quick. So we'll put that guy there, this one there, that one there. All right, and these are pretty cheap in comparison to the aqueous accumulators. Okay, so it doesn't look like they're updating the water. They're not actually removing the source blocks, which is pretty cool. Uh, it is providing water this pretty quickly, and look at how fast that power is going up, my goodness. Okay, so to me, this seems like this is gonna work for us. So we got three of these things going. We could probably put another one on there if we wanted to, but what's interesting to me 
is that we since we have a steam turbine here and we have two of those, I'm seeing a pattern. So we could put a steam turbine right here and then do some more of these liquid nodes on either side and continue those on. So each one of these steam turbines will have a bunch of these uh, transfer nodes around them. And yeah, I think I want to set up a power plant using these and the transfer nodes. I think that's going to be really, really awesome. Uh, I got to figure out where we're going to put it though. I might build off of the platform here, off our main island. I might make a little thing over here just for water and the steam turbines. Uh, one thing though that's going to hold us back is these require rubber and I do not have a lot of rubber. I would like to get into a lot of the mine factory reloaded stuff like making the tree farms for rubber trees so we can collect a whole lot of that stuff. I mean there's a lot of bits and pieces to this but I think uh, this transfer node steam turbine combination is going to be amazing. So uh, tell you what guys let me make another quick break. I'm going to build a few of these things. We'll set up a little test area for them and just see how much power we can create off these guys. See you in a bit. All right, guys, so I went to go farm a little bit of rubber and I've been trying to use this lumber axe and I cut down a few of these trees and something I noticed, uh, besides this axe is a little slow, is, yeah, we're getting the charcoal and we're chopping down the trees and all that is great. Except we're not getting any rubber. So it looks like if you have auto smelt on a lumber axe with the MFR trees, it won't drop any rubber. I didn't know that before. Uh, so we can't use that axe. So I went ahead and made a new lumber axe. This one, uh, cobalt head, uh, manulin handle, obsidian plate, thomic, thomium binding. And then I put a whole bunch of haste on there. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be pretty good. I put haste and I also put the RF, the flux capacitor on there. So this thing will just charge my suit. It's pretty quick. Chops down these trees really, really fast. I like that. Um, yeah, and it should last pretty much for forever since it's running off RF. It's always going to be charged up as I move around, chopping down more trees and things. And being that this is kind of a specific task axe, uh, just for actually getting wood and not charcoal, probably not going to be using it as much. Although later on in the future, we might be farming some different types of woods and things like that. So it'll probably get some use, so it won't be a waste. But yeah, definitely something to be aware of. Did that thing just, that thing just grew from me using the watering can. That's interesting. Yeah, just something to be aware of. It doesn't look like auto smelt will let you get uh, any of the MFR rubber. I think in the past, actually, it would auto smelt the rubber so you'd get rubber bars being dropped. So that must be something that they nerfed. They must not have liked that or something. But yeah, guys, let me go ahead and chop down a few more of these trees, collect some rubber, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I went ahead and I made uh, three more steam turbines, and I made a few more of these transfer node liquid items, and I made that redstone energy cell. I put it on the ground, I picked it, uh, instead of picking it up with the wrench so it no longer has any energy. So we did this because I want to do some testing here. So the steam turbine is powering our ME controller and it's keeping up pretty well with three of these things but I'm curious if three of these transfer nodes is enough to provide water for maximum output. So let's stick this guy here and do I have to set that to blue? There we go, now it's gaining power, yep. So how's that doing to this thing? Aha, so the steam turbine is keeping up. It looks like it's probably putting out the maximum amount of power and it's getting enough water to keep it refilled. Awesome. So I wonder how many of these transfer nodes we need. And actually, how fast is that going? That's going pretty fast for just water, right? Yeah, that's going to be really awesome. Okay, so let's take one of these things off. Uh-huh. And... Okay, so it's still keeping up, so two of those appears to be enough. Now maybe over time it's going to get lower and lower, I don't know. I might have to just sit here and watch it for a little bit, but it looks like two's enough. So if that's the case, we might be able to do something really, really compact as far as energy production. And that's still, yeah, it's still outputting pretty quickly here. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking, let's see, this isn't going to be the permanent spot. But I'm thinking we could probably do something like put these all in a row. Aha, that works. And let's see, grab these guys. We'll do like turbine, turbine, turbine. 
Yep. <laughs> I think you guys see where this is going. So we can do dirt and dirt. I don't want to put them all in there right now because I don't want to ruin the source blocks. So we do something like that. Remove these guys. Get that dirt back. And place something else here to stick that transfer node on. Coin of suck. Give me that dirt. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, so we can stick the other two over here, do the same thing over here, give all these guys plenty of water. Uh-huh. That there, just like that. Can I get that piece of dirt? Got it, kind of. Got it. All right, so now all of these guys, mm-hmm. Those are all full of water, ready to produce some power. So the next step would be to get some redstone energy conduits, which I don't have on me. Let's go back to the base real quick. Let's get those. Yeah, a little laggy. Uh, redstone energy conduits. Let's grab these guys, stick them on there, and see how fast we can charge that energy cell. I think that's going to be pretty awesome. So there, there, there. Okay, so I think that's probably charging as... Well, I wouldn't say it's as fast as it could go. Because it looks like it can do 2,000 at a time. I don't think we're producing that much. But, as you can see, this is going to be a pretty awesome power setup. So, we just have to make a whole line of these steam turbines and a whole line of these transfer nodes. And that is going to provide us a lot of power for, essentially, for free. Now, I didn't like that. That looks like it's going down a bit. That could just be lag. Uh, I think this is going to be one of those things we're just going to have to sit here and watch it for a little while. Uh, it could also be that this is kind of connected so the water is kind of diverting to other spots. I don't know. But it seems to be holding fairly steady. Oh, that guy is going down pretty low. Maybe it'd be better if we didn't put these directly next to each other. Put a little space so these transfer node pipes don't connect. Now, do these work with the micro blocks? I know that you can separate some pipes by putting micro blocks between them. That might be something we need to do. Uh, let's see. There's some covers. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just... I <laughs> don't want to do that. I'm just going to try this real quick. And let's see. Can we... Oh, wait. Can we do that? No. It does not look like... I'm going to try it. Shift and place it. Oh, no. We can do it. Okay, good, good, good. So we do that, that, that. All right. So that separates these guys. Could probably do it with a different thing instead of a stone cover because that looks kind of ugly. Or maybe we could just completely encase these so we won't even see the transfer nodes there. But that should separate these guys and keep it so they're not diverting water to other ones. They're just doing it for themselves. So that could be a good way to do it. Yeah, I didn't even know that those micro blocks would work with these, but that's awesome. Okay, so this guy is completely isolated. It has its own two guys. Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm, so I don't know if it's a good idea to do that or not, or just to leave them all connected. I, I just don't know. All right, so I think the next step is to create a whole bunch of these steam turbines. More than what we got here. Oh yeah, because we're gonna be producing a lot of RF quickly and easily. Uh, then we're gonna have to transfer this power. I think we're gonna wanna store it up and then use it for you know, powering quarries and things like that, putting it on a uh, Tesseract, I think that would be a good idea. Hmm. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Give me a few more minutes here. I'm going to create a few more of these steam turbines. And I think we're going to go a little overboard. See you in a bit. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun putting this all together. So I got a total of 10 of these steam turbines now. And I got them all separated with these stone brick covers. Now, this does look kind of ugly and kind of funky. Uh, but what we're going to end up doing, I think, when we get this set up in a proper spot, is we're just going to go ahead and put these stone brick covers all over it. Whoops, I did not mean to do that one. We're going to just put these guys all over. We won't even be able to see them. Uh, it'll just look like stone brick there. So, yeah, that'll look pretty good, I think. Um, well, actually, those I think that might be on the wrong spot. I think those are supposed to go right there. Yeah, that's just one too wide. I was placing those... In the next block over, not in the same spot as our transfer nodes, but that's easily fixed. We can just go ahead and do this and this. So there we go. Now they look like a solid block. <laughs> That'll be really awesome. I like it. So the question is, 
Uh, how fast is this going to fill up like one of these redstone energy cells? You can see that this guy is already full now. It didn't take too long at all for that to fill up. But I am curious to see how quickly we can get this thing to fill. So I think, yeah, when you do that, that turns off. Now, I don't know if that's exactly 2,000 a tick, but my goodness, that is a lot of RF. That is more RF, I think, than I can produce with the charcoal or anything like that. Um, yeah, we've already got 500,000 RF. Oh, man, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to add more steam turbines than this uh, for our main power setup. But I really think this is what we're going to do for now for power. Um, not really super interesting once it's all put in place, but it's very cheaty, very easy. We don't have to worry about fuel. We don't have to worry about pretty much anything, and that is what I really like. Oh, man, look at that. Almost 2 million RF now. Whew, that is a lot. Oh, man. All right, guys. I think I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. Uh, I'm going to look at putting this thing in a proper spot, getting like a permanent spot for it. Uh, I might end up hollowing out this hill, or we might still flatten it out. I haven't quite decided just yet, uh, but we do need a spot for our power production. Uh, is there any other spot here that would be good for that? Um... Well, right at the entrance, it's kind of in the way. It almost makes sense to have, like, the power production, you know, kind of far away. And then we'll have, like, all the more interesting things, like tree farms and other things like that, closer to the entrance. Uh, but I do kind of think that I want to flatten this out. Uh, I know people, or at least a couple of people said that I shouldn't do that, that I should work with the train. But to be honest, it's just a lump. <laughs> there's nothing here to work with. It's not like there's any mountains or anything cool. So, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, remember to leave a like on the episode if you like cheaty power. I know I do. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you next time.